Hello, my name is Samuel Torres, and I will be presenting to you my experiment that I did for heat transfer. So basically, what I wanted to do was to uh, be able to find out what the temperature profile is on a two feet long, half inch diameter copper pipe. And based on this, come up with a temperature profile across this same pipe. Um, I also wanted to come, uh, double check my answers or my data, I should say, with ANSYS and see what, what ANSYS gave me versus what I got in, in, in real life. So the question that I wanted to answer with this in the real life world was, um, how much temperature drop would I have from my water heater in the garage up to the third level uh, floor, uh, to the third floor in the ta uh, tub spout? So how much of temperature difference would, that, would I have if I have copper pipe half inch diameter? So to do this, I uh, bought a pump that was powered with, by a drill. I uh, measured the temperature going into the pipe and also outside the pipe. And this helped me model the temperature profile across the pipe. I used two thermocouples, Arduino thermocouples, that helped me uh, measure the temperature in and out. Um, some of the basic assumptions that I I made was that I, I was working with an incompressible flow. I had no local rate rate of change in mass and momentum. My boundary conditions on the left, where the water goes in, I have type type one since my temperature is constant. On the right side, I have uh, type two since I have uh, convective um, heat transfer due to the ambient air and and also on the walls. I assumed type two since I also have um, convective convective flux. Um, since I of uh, the walls uh, behave as a heat sink, and I also assumed an initial condition of twenty five point five um, degrees Celsius. I'm assuming I was. I'm assuming that the temperature air at the time that I was performing the experiment was at twenty five point five degrees Celsius. Now, my one of the main equations that I used for this is. Uh, I, I'm assuming that there's conservation of mass, which there is, conservation of momentum, which it's the velocity of the water, and conservation of thermal energy, which is um, basically means that the temperature going in has to be the same as the temperature going out to out of the system. And now putting all of those together, we set them equal to zero so that our um, conservation of energy can be true. Um, so after performing the um experiment we did three i did three trials the first trial um as you can see most of the dots are um located at, per, at different spots that means because i wasn't holding the trigger um uh, at a constant speed so the the flow at certain times was faster than at, uh, than at others and uh you can see that that's the same for um trial 2 and trial 3 um Trial two is the one that I seems to be the most accurate, since most of the dots are co concentrated in one spot. This means that um, the flow rate was roughly constant all throughout. Now, if we take a look at our graphs of uh, water, water, the temperature of the water going in and the temperature of the water going out, we can see that there's there's a, a, a change in temperature there's some some heat that's being um, lost uh, across those two feet of, uh, of pipe and uh, trial two that gap that you see there is because our our uh, thermocouple stopped working for, for uh, um, roughly 20 seconds and that's why you see that empty gap right there um, and so I uh, modeled this in ANSYS the uh, top left uh, figure figure seven it's our flux profile across the pipe you can see water going in heats up the copper more than at the at the outlet and then figure eight that's just the uh, temperature profile on the inlet of the water of the, of the pipe um this i it's not quite accurate i need to go back and figure out why this is wrong but it's supposed to be blue at the edges since we're assuming no slip boundary conditions and it's supposed to be hotter at the center. But that can be solved by just adjusting 
some of the um, settings in ANSI's figure nine, that's our velocity profile uh, across the, the pipe. There's not much to see since you can't really see the velocity from outside the pipe. But if you look at a figure 10, that you can see that the velocity is greatest at the center. Now, I plotted my uh, temperature drop and it seems to be roughly around 30.75 degrees Celsius. Um, that's based on the average temperatures that I got from uh, the three um, trials. Um, so we, we are able to, with this data, calculate some things. So we got our average max, min, we have our flow rate. That was the average from the three trials. And how I calculated this was by uh, using the bucket timer method. So measuring how much water was coming out of the pipe and how long it took. And then what we are most interested in, the average heat loss which it turned out to be 10.87 watts per inch squared, which is roughly what we got from our experiment. That much of uh, that much power we're losing in a two feet long, half an inch diameter copper pipe. Um, so for the future, if we add more thermocouples all throughout the pipe, I can get a better estimate of how the temperature profile looks like experimentally. And then if I get a a pump that it's you know has a constant flow rate, then I can minimize my uh, my errors. Um, also, maybe adding ice outside the the pipe for one of the trials to see how how values change. That could be a good thing to do to uh, increase our accuracy in our data. Um, definitely use more accurate measurements measurement instruments. Um, if if I had more budget, I would have bought some more. Um, reliable uh, thermocouples, but but I don't have the resources right now. Um, and then also, instead of just doing the experiment for three times, maybe doing it by, you know, five times, or even more if possible to increase the accuracy. Um, so yeah, that's my project. And that's how I, I went about it and all the data that I got from it and how I uh, compare that with ANSYS. Well, thank you so much for listening. And I hope you have a um, great winter break. And that is it.